Hi everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for um, for joining us for this uh, new Secular webinar. Um, today uh, we will uh, introduce you uh, with uh, four different um, certified um, Secular certified consultants of the Secular community. Uh, one of our great friends. Um, so on YouTube, you have a chat box. So do not hesitate to um, to ask your question in the chat box, and we will we will uh, answer them at the end um, for the Q and A session. And um, yeah, so welcome and um, enjoy uh, enjoy it. And once again, do not hesitate to to ask your question. Um, so in the first time, I will introduce you um, Circulab. <clears throat> What's Circulab? Uh, we're a strategy agency and a design studio dedicated to circular and regenerative economy. Uh, we exist uh, for eight years now, and um, we we have three main activities, which is uh, which are training, uh, consulting, and design. Um, we use consulting to help our clients to imagine new services, new products, new industrial processes uh, for circular economy and the design um, services enable us to, to make their um, ideas real. So that's why we insist on this connection between both. Our mission, our um, purpose is to regenerate an ecosystem. So what does it mean? We try to make life um, growing actually, uh, and to improve uh, the resilience um, of uh, communities and companies. And um, last but not least, we try to, to be as sober as possible when we use um, resources. So. Uh, that's why we, we try to uh, sum up our um, purpose in this um, two um, uh, in these two simple words: uh, regenerate ecosystems. Uh, to do so, we uh, we invite um, our clients to adopt a systemic thinking, because most of the time we uh, we to innovate only with business in mind, but we have to understand that uh, the human, of course, is important. Uh, all uh, the experience that we offer um, to the to the clients or all the potential um, stakeholders have to be uh, uh, perfectly uh, designed. And then we integrate uh, the techniques, the technology aspects to be sure that it's possible and it's sober. And of course, uh, last but not least, we, we have to um, understand that we are part of a great ecosystem and um, this ecosystem uh, uh, can do, um, can do um, a lot without us and we cannot do uh, something without it. So we have to, un to understand it and to integrate it from the design stage because it's the best uh, moment to, um, to design a regenerative and secular product. So <clears throat> to, to do so, we, um, we, uh, we try to implement a secular economy. So that means that we try to optimize the use um, step and to integrate from the beginning, the reuse, the repair or reconditioning the remake of the products and eventually as a recycling phase, because we tend to forget that um, recycling is um, is not so um, relevant because it it needs a lot of energy and not a lot of equipment and that's not so relevant comparing to reuse or repair, for example. Um, Circular, it's three main um, uh, parts. The first one, uh, it's a toolbox with very easy and reu reusable tools. Uh, today, we will discover one of them, which is the Circular Canvas. Uh, then, uh, the Circular is a, a great community of experts with a common methodology. Uh, all of them are trained to uh, understand this um, this um, uh, method, and um, that's quite cool. And I'm glad to introduce uh, Joanna, for example, uh, which is a um, Secular Certified Consultant from uh, since uh, 2017. Hi, Joanna. Hello, hello. Thank you, Rick. So yeah, I'm an engineer specialized in the energy transition and industrial ecology. Um, so looking at renewable energy, energy efficiency, water use and waste reduction. 
I run Blue Dot, which is a consulting company with the aim of assisting clients in the identification of circular economy opportunities. And I've been using the tool since 2017. Uh, particularly, they're useful when we need to establish a shared vision of um, a value chain and looking at the material flows and the social and economic impacts all along a chain, a value chain. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. And yeah, that's a great thing that you just mentioned. But uh, in this circular community, you have designers, engineers, marketers, um, biologists, uh, many, many different profiles. And that's a great thing to implement um, system, uh, I mean, um, relevant system solutions, actually. Um, hello, Guy. Uh, Guy, are you with us? Yes. Uh, um, and hi, everybody. Um, I've been uh, since uh, 2017, like uh, Joanna. I come from a telecoms uh, background of business planning um, and uh, only recently uh, in 2012 realized the importance of uh, sustainability. Um, I use the circular canvas uh, in, uh, often in the training courses that I give to startups. Uh, and I find it really valuable to help them to see their gee, mission. Gee, gee. Yeah. We will, uh, we will uh, come to your feedback after, but to introduce okay. you, that was perfect. Thank you. Gee. Thank you. Um, and then we have uh, Michel from Norway. Hey, everyone. I'm uh, the co-founder of BioMQ Norway. And uh, as such, we've been providing services in engineering and design since 2015, uh, promoting the uh, promoting basically innovation inspired by nature and the circular economy. So we've been running a bunch of workshops using Circle Labs since then, uh, both in academia and in uh, with businesses. Okay, great, thanks. And uh, we have uh, Federico from uh, Buenos Aires. Hi, Fede. Hi there. Well, I'm Federico, executive director of Colibri. Uh, we are a consulting agency in Latin America. Our mission is to design and implement uh, high tailor-made, innovative, and high high impact strategies for all kinds of the organizations. We we have a strong belief uh, on, on on the power of connecting people inside the organizations and, and throughout all their value chain. So that is our, our main objective nowadays. Perfect. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> and uh, with these great tools and this great community, we do secular actions. So they're in on-demand services, like I introduced them uh, to the beginning. So mainly trainings, consulting, and design services. Here are some uh, references we work with uh, in France and in other countries. And um, for um, nearly a year now, we are a certified B Corporation and uh, we are part of the One Person for the Planet movement uh, initiated by um, Yvon Chouinard as the founder of uh, Patagonia. Uh, I will introduce quickly the, the circular method. It's a three-step uh, method with uh, first uh, the explore uh, step, uh, just understand the context, understand the flows and so on. Then how to generate ideas, so create something new or recreate something already existing. And uh, then the implement uh, phase, so how to make it real to be sure that we change things, we have impacts. Then today we will focus only on the two first steps with uh, one of the tools that I introduced you, which is the circular canvas. Uh, here it is. Um, the circular canvas, um, thanks to the circular community, is translated in already seven languages, um, and is um, and it's up, uh, it's available um, for free on the circular.com uh, website. We will introduce you how it works. And um, it actually, the circular canvas, yeah, of course, it's inspired by the um, uh, very famous um, business model Canva created by uh, Alexander Osterwelder. To the beginning, um, six years ago, when we tried, to, um, when we worked with uh, different uh, companies, we understood that the, the BMC was not relevant with the circular economy uh, uh, paradigm. When you try to integrate um, systems thinking um, in your um, in your job, uh, BMC is too focused on the economic uh, aspect. So that's why we totally changed 
uh, um, the canvas and we created this, so the circular canvas. And that's quite interesting because it can correspond to a business model. It can be focused more on a specific product or service, um, a type of client, a partner, an equipment, a flow. Uh, for example, we, we worked on the on an industrial process and we we, we followed um, the flow of a specific paper from the printer to the recycling um, um, to the recycling um, factory or eventually a, an event. Actually, the circular canvas uh, enables you to easily understand uh, a system and uh, you can focus it um, on the area you think it's relevant. So that's why it's uh, very um, uh, easy to, to use it. So as I told you in the first time, we observe context, understand the flow, the stakeholders and their interactions. And when you fill up the circular canvas, um, it forces you to do all these things. And that's quite interesting because it's not an exercise you will do alone. Uh, the more you will involve uh, your stakeholders, the more you will know things uh, about the context. So that's why it's very important to, to, to fill it up uh, with your teams or with even people um, are, um, outside your, uh, your organization because it will be more rich and more relevant to, to act on it. And then, of course, I try to design from the, 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 the right needs, let's say, um, not only the user wants and the basic needs, uh, but um, also the, the, the needs um, from the system around him. Because most of the time, we focus only on the client, let's say, and that's why we are still focused only on the business aspect. We have to understand the system around the, the user because the more we integrate it, the more it will be relevant to to um, to use less resources, to optimize uh, equipment, to um, uh, to adapt with uh, the climate change and so on. Because we need to to um, to design with a systems thinking. Because if we, we do not, it won't be relevant on a on a long scale. So. Uh, what is it for? Uh, we have three main uh, objectives you can do only with the, I mean, with the circular canvas only because we have other circular tools that are very complementary to this tool. The first one is to analyze a business activity and how it creates values, not only economic, but also social and ecosystemic value. Especially it can, when we talk about ecosystem, we can, we can talk about human ecosystem and of course, living eco ecosystems. And the second um, objective is to anticipate potential risk and improve uh, the resilience of the company. And of course, with the COVID-19 crisis, it's quite uh, relevant to, to think uh, the, to this aspect right now. But uh, once again, it's not something we, we've done uh, for a few weeks. Uh, it's, um, it's something that we, we talk um, uh, for a few years now. So that's quite interesting that people really understand uh, uh, how um, important it is right now. Then uh, the last one is create new business and ecosystemic opportunities because if we know that, of course, business uh, are necessary for any company, we can't uh, continue to innovate only by thinking to the business aspects. We have to integrate all the ecosystem to be sure that we create values for them too. So that's very important to, to get this, um, this way of um, creating values. So how does it work? Um, we have to integrate uh, different principles. So we adapted and we apply um, the living ecosystem principles. The first one we, we want to, um, to show is that the waste is a resource for others. In ecosystems, you have no um, species that uh, do waste and um, no one is using it. Uh, everyone, <clears throat> I mean, it's all, uh, every flows that go out goes in another system and it's always, uh, um, you have always something to, to deal with it. So that means that as a designer, business designer, let's say, we have to avoid waste flows from the beginning because we know that 80% of the impacts on the waste are um, 
are decided to the design stage. So that's why the design uh, from a systems perspective is very, very relevant. Then the second principle is to optimize what's already here by using renewable resources and local one, uh, because it's more um, it's necessary to adapt and to uh, avoid uh, to depend, for example, on oil that is um, that will be uh, less and less available in the next um, years. So that's why we have to integrate all this. I mean, to know and identify the right resource that we already have uh, around us, and then to improve uh, the resilience of um, the ecosystem, we have to multiply uh, synergies to be sure that you will have um, companies, organization, whatever, we, that will have the know-how to uh, adapt and react uh, if you have um, uh, a major event. So that's why you have to uh, integrate that. It's better to not to do everything but uh, to connect with other um, organization to be sure that um, uh, it will be alive and uh, able to, to respond. So how it works precisely, um, there's a first uh, box that we, uh, that is very, very important actually. Uh, we try to start with why. So when we think to the Simon Sinek uh, uh, TED conference, uh, we we tend to think to the purpose. Here in this uh, circular canvas, we try to focus mainly on the basic needs. So when we talk about the basic need, it would be um, uh, maybe a heat or a move uh, from a point A to point B, but try to be very uh, simple to be sure that people understand it and they will adapt it uh, perfectly um, in the different context. Uh, you can have many, many different companies, for example, like uh, Uber or um, uh, Air France uh, that will have uh, the same uh, purpose, but the value proposition and the user and context they will um, respond to will be very different. So we will get back to this later, but just take time to um, define correctly uh, the mission. Then you have a first column with um, all the human resources, the skills um, that are needed to develop this activity. So in the key activities, you have all the, um, the skills and the competencies uh, that are uh, in the company or that you have to integrate in the company. And then you have the partners uh, and with, with all the skills um, to, 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 to run this business. Then you have uh, all the um, resources. So you have the natural ones, the technical ones. Um, so we differentiate them, them uh, very uh, easily when you when you don't master the secret canvas uh, clearly. You try to um, divide the, the, um, the natural ones. They are the ones that are biodegradable. If it's not, it's a technical one. So we tend to integrate uh, all the factories, equipments um, inside, but you can also integrate packaging, um, all this stuff, you can put them in the technical resources. And then you have all the energy resources. So um, concerning these um, resources, I mean, these three different ones, we tend to, um, uh, to adapt them, not only to the production step, but during all the different steps. So that means, for example, a website uh, will not use, for example, many uh, technical resources or um, energy uh, to the production, but during the user's um, experience, it will, uh, it will be very, um, it will um, have a huge uh, need. So do not hesitate to integrate um, this and to anticipate uh, the impact of this uh, resources um, uh, needs. Then you have all the value proposition. So what are the products? What are the services that you will propose to the users and eventually the context? Um, we tend to differentiate uh, users and context because um, when we talk about context, we can talk about uh, business with a specific um, um, kind of um, user. Uh, for example, if you do a service for a um, train station or, um, or for pregnant women, uh, you you will have very specific touch points that you can deal with. But if you try to do a service for uh, 
um, for pregnant women by doing this, by the marketing uh, all the strategies, it won't be as relevant. So that's why we tend to differentiate and sometimes to use uh, more uh, specifically the context um, uh, because it's more relevant. Then uh, you have all the distribution uh, box. So what, what it corresponds to, how do you uh, sell your product? How people know about this product? So you try to imagine uh, how you sell it. And then the next use. So you have to anticipate um, what uh, your different components, what your, what, um, what your product will become after the use. So that doesn't mean that you have to focus on recycling. Sometimes you have um, much more um, opportunities to, to create when you think to the, re you the reuse uh, for with reuse or repair services. So try to anticipate it and to be sure that you will do something much more relevant than we do right now. Because once again, 80% um, of the environmental impacts depends on the design stage. And another key figure is, is that 80% uh, of the things we buy are thrown away in the next six months. So that means that we forget and we do not design things correctly right now. So that's why we have to anticipate this and to, to anticipate, anticipate this um, end of life of the product because that's a, a clear way uh, of creating new opportunities. Um, yeah, um, so that's... These main boxes, um, the central ones, corresponds to um, choices uh, from a company, from a team, and these choices have impact on the ecosystem. So, when we talk about ecosystem, once again, it's the human or living ecosystems. So, these impacts are the negative, or positive. Try to anticipate this and to make uh, to to correspond this them with um, your choices just below. And of course, you have um, economic uh, impacts as well. So uh, do you have new revenues? Do you have costs? Anticipate this uh, as well, because it's another way to create new revenue streams or reduce costs um, concerning uh, your business. Um, and now I will uh, let the floor uh, to uh, Joanna to, to give us some feedback uh, about different experiences, uh, uh, the different consultants had. Um, Joanna, you want to start? Yes. Well, thank you very much, Brick, for that excellent presentation on the, on the theory. So I'm going to talk about two different projects where I've used the Circulab tool. So the first one was with Inedis. So Enedis is the French electricity distribution network. And the context was that the regional branch had received a request from the head office to put in place a circular economy program. So what we did was we organized a workshop for around 25 employees that represented all different activities and seniority levels in the company. And so we started off with a very brief discussion about the circular economy and then divided the group up into mixed teams. And each team had one of these circular canvases that Breeks just presented um, with part of it filled in. And their job was to fill in um, the section on the environmental and social impacts, and also to fill in the part, the part on stakeholders, different partners, and to identify any circular economy actions already in place. So this is a very, it's very simple, exercise but it was very effective because you immediately create a shared vision of what the company does what its impacts are and what the ecosystem it's working in is and it also um the format of the the workshop the fact that, that we have a board and that we have cards and it's a very uh, ludic atmosphere means that you easily break down any um barriers between different seniority different hierarchical levels so the output of this exercise was that each group, which had been given a, a, a different thematic challenge um, on either waste, transport, different types of materials, had a proposition at the end of the workshop, which they presented to all the participants and also to the management of the company. So these propositions are now being studied and some of them put in place. So 
using the tools, it enabled us to, to really establish right at the beginning a shared vision of what is the circular economy? How does it, how does it apply to my activity? Also, what is the value chain of the activity of the whole company? Not just the part I'm involved in, but all our, all our activities. Um, and also the fact that it's, um, it's quite a fun and relaxed way of approaching the subject. It breaks down barriers and um, it encourages creativity. And it means that people aren't afraid to, to speak and to propose their ideas. That was the case of Anedis. Um, I'll talk about a slightly different project for the region Occitani. So the Occitani region, it's quite a big region in the south of France. And in this case, we were working in the context of a much longer project. So a six months project working on their circular economy roadmap, identifying different opportunities. And um, two different areas came up as interesting for further, further study. So battery reuse and recycling and also carbon fiber reuse and recycling. So here the challenge to move further because when you're in um, the context of a region, you really need to associate all the different stakeholders. So from the small manufacturing companies uh, up to multinationals, you need to um, work with the research institutes, waste collection. So you've got all different types of actors who don't necessarily have the same interest and the same aims and the same strategies for development. So in this case, using the Circular tools um, was really helpful because it enabled us to create um, a space where it was very easy for different organizations to discuss with each other. Um, it was a very open space. And actually we found that different actors who had previously considered themselves as competitors um, found subjects which they could collaborate on. And in one of the groups, they actually identified a few resources that they could um, finance participatively and then share the use of. So it was a, a really helpful exercise for those points. And we also managed to, for each subject, identify um, very concrete development projects which are now being put in place by the region. Okay. Perfect. I'll hand over to Michael, I think, <laughs> to talk about his projects. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Joanna. Um, Michel, you want to continue? Yes. Um, so uh, we were invited last year to hold a workshop in Serbia, uh, which was one of my favorite workshops. This where I picked Hemofarm. So Hemofarm is um, a major player in the pharmaceuticals in Serbia, but also internationally. And uh, they're also the main sponsor of the Mixer Festival, which is a circular economy festival in uh, Belgrade. And what they've asked us to do is to run a workshop in their company. And then we suggested to run a similar workshop at the festival to get also outsiders input on the scenarios the company was working with. So what was really great with the workshop we did internally in the company is that it allowed them to make the time to actually work in a structured way on a few topics that they were struggling with. And the canvas is really great for that, for structuring the discussion uh, on the different um, parts of it. And uh, it's great also because it allows you to onboard different departments. Because we asked them to bring in as many departments as they could and uh, like Joanna said, it helps create a shared vision for all the departments in the company and engage everybody. So they, they chose three scenarios. They, they wanted to better engage the end customers in the use and recycling of their products. Uh, the second one was on including their distributors in the circular initiatives that they wanted to create. And the third one was quite interesting because it was reinventing a little bit the business model of the company. Uh, they wanted to go from providing uh, cures as medication to preventing them because they also realized that 50% of the illnesses are lifestyle related illnesses. And they wanted to play a role into that. They wanted to be a partner for people to thrive and have better health. So that was kind of uh, 
pivoting a little bit their idea of their business because that would lead also obviously to selling less of their medication. And uh, actually that last scenario was uh, fantastic because the team working on that was totally fired up and uh, they get super creative on the different parts of the canvas. So in that sense, it was a very useful tool. So once we were done with that, we run uh, two of those scenarios with, uh, within the Mixer Festival and had uh, uh, two groups on each scenario and we fed that information back into the company. And what was really great is um, I think the canvas allows you to get right into uh, the topics in a structured way without you knowing much about either the company or even business modeling. Uh, I've been running those workshops with uh, academia as well. And, you know, especially with design students and they have no idea of, uh, they don't have any business background. So it's, it's really great because it makes the whole discussion so easy at one glimpse you have um, the, the whole business model of the company you understand how it works but you can structure the discussion and see where you can act and who is to be onboarded uh, what consequence doing something there has on the other parts of the business and um, yeah it, it's it's really great because you can then focus either if you're a business person you know you might want to uh, work more on the business side but then you get also an understanding of how this impacts like design and other things. So I think it's a great tool to create also empathy because um, it allows the different departments in a company to communicate on a different level and make them understand how uh, their part impacts different sides of the business model. But also if you're talking to designer, it, it kind of helps bridge those two worlds, the design world and the business world. So um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's what I wanted to mention about my experience with the circle. Thank you, Michel. Thank you. That's great. And uh, maybe Guy, you, you you want to add something because I, I know that you you regularly work with um, academics as well. Uh, maybe you want to add something. Um, yes. Uh, actually, it's more with uh, startups and people who are starting their their companies. So it's part of a training course, um, uh, giving them all the tools. Um, and what is really powerful I find uh, in the model um, is that uh, by thinking about the mission uh, it helps them to question why they are doing that uh, and then as we go through uh, okay what are you doing who you're working with what are the resources you're using um, and what does that mean uh, in, in terms of uh, meeting the needs real needs of people um, ah okay then that purpose in uh, what I want to do actually can find something very concrete. OK, I'm going to do this. But what is even more far powerful is the systemic view that um, Briot mentioned, because then the impact of those uh, activities uh, in the context of that societal purpose. Um, so how does it really impact uh, the social or the ecological uh, part of it? And then helps them to see, ah, oh, well, financially, uh, is it uh, viable or not. And so it brings the circle around to what they really wanted to do, what they are doing, and the impact, and helps them think really systemically about the way they are building their future business. That's how I use it. Perfect. Thank you, Guy. Um, and uh, Fede, do you have uh, something to, to add? Because your, your slide is, is quite uh, tough to digest. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to be brief. No, no. But it's the very yeah. use. Uh, in, in, in our experience, mainly we've been working with um, more than 1,000 people, uh, organizations with the Circle Lab. So, so, so for me, the, the, the magic around the Circle Lab Canvas is that it allows us to understand the social and environmental challenges as business variables. It's not something that it's outside, it's on the side that we think afterwards, we have been thinking on the business model, but it's something that we think while we're thinking on the business model. I think this is very, very important because when we, we understand this, we, we, we can not think anymore of externalities. We are, we are taking those impacts directly as key business indicators. So, so this is a, a source for, for definitely for cost avoidance and, and new revenue streams. And as Michelle told before, it, 
we learned that it's very, very important to get as many areas as possible into the business model because at the end of the day, although we have different specializations and the production part or supply chain and marketing have specific uh, objectives and, and goals, in, in the canvas becomes a very good tool to put all those visions together. So, so mainly when we are talking about very big organizations, we most know that communication is very difficult because there's too many people going around. So there's, there's a big challenge there. And this kind of workshops and, and canvases allows us to put everyone on the same page and bring them all together. So, so we got two benefits directly there. The first one is to, to avoid working in silos, to, to avoid working people that are working in similar path, but on different directions or on the same path. So we're multiplying by two or by three, the amount of power that is not coordinated between the, 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 the people working. The, the second one is that we can, I'm sorry, Brooke, you went <laughs> so the second one is that we can have a fast check for feasibility because it, it, it many times what happens is that the marketing area has a very bright idea and you start working on that and suddenly you a month passes by and then they go to talk to the production area or the supply chain and the supply chain tell them that it's impossible there's no way to apply that so you actually lost one month of, of the work area or, or more than one area. So what happens when you have all of these areas working together on the business model of an innovation or of a, on a project or on a business specific business unit is that you get gain more traction and you lose less time in, in checking the feasibility of the different ideas. Um, and then other important point or, or value that I, I can find and I can make sure that is there on, on the canvas is to, to extend the view of the value chain outside the limits of the organization. When, when we start working on the, on the full business model, we realize that there are some key partners that, that are crucial to our businesses. And, and, and if they have a win situation, a win situation, and suddenly we're not thinking of them as a, as a provider or supplier, we're thinking of as a key strategic partner or, or, as a, or as a main uh, angle or main stone of, of, our, of our success. So we start thinking on how to build that relationship on the long run, how to promote them, how to make them uh, more resilient to, 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 because it's at the end a benefit for, our, for us. And the maximum benefit of course, is that once you're thinking on the business model, and, and you're not thinking about social issues or challenges or environmental challenges as one thing that is on the side of the business model, is that when you integrate the solutions directly to the core business model, you have perfectly scalable solutions because for the company, it's, a, it's very, very clear that is the way it goes. You're going to want to keep on, on, on promoting and developing the organization while you do good on the way. So that it's a bit of a resume of great 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 trip. thank you thank you Fede, for, for this great feedback um we will have question for you at the end but um, i will introduce another case um, uh, that we've done uh, at Seculab um, last year uh, and and it's still going actually uh, it's a small uh, sme in france which is called power um, uh, it sells uh, mainly um, sparkling water in plastic bottles and as you can imagine plastic is not um, a great uh, a great way of uh, selling uh, uh, sparkling water uh, for the 21st century and um, the boss of this uh, SME uh, told us okay I want to change things but I don't know what to do and uh, we started to to map uh, the, the business model and its impact in the secret act and that's uh, with its team and that was very interesting because uh, you know uh, you have very big specialists uh, in uh, the different areas. So, for example, you have the, the production, the quality, um, the, the business, I um, mean, the, the, the sales. And um, that was very interesting to, to see them sharing information because they couldn't imagine the different constraints of the different areas of the company. And by talking together, they understood uh, all the different impacts they had and they understood that they could facilitate many, many things. And then in a second time, uh, with other secret tools, 
uh, we made them ima imagine uh, design, co-design, a new way of selling um, sparkling water without uh, plastic bottles. So they imagine this, and we uh, we designed uh, the their ideas with these different images. So that was quite interesting, and now we have to test it um, soon. But with the COVID nineteen crisis, it's quite complicated to go <laughs> in the supermarket. But uh, that was just another example. Um, do you have questions? So I'm not able to to check everything in the same time. So that's why sometimes the screen is moving. Um, but uh, guys, do you have a first question to 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 ask? Uh, in the chat box, um, Fede, I, I saw that you 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 had some questions in spanish so <laughs> do not hesitate to to answer them um there was a question i oh, sorry i can share there was a question about what kind of companies or industries are the ones that most receive this kind of of request of of using a circle lab in their business models i was just answering that in our in, my, in our experience uh we got lots of traction on the ones that already have targets to 2025, 2030, or 2040, that they are actually not checking what their business model is today, but they are thinking way ahead. So I just, I don't know if anyone can comment there, or what kind of companies or industries are the ones that are more attracted to circular. Okay, great. And um, I see a question from uh, Audrey for uh, Joanna. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, I mean, are you able to precise some uh, concrete projects that uh, emerge from the um, Occitani uh, workshop? Yeah, I can't go into too much detail because it's still in discussion in the region. But the, um, the big challenge with, for example, the carbon fiber, the big challenge of creating a market for recycled carbon fiber is the expense of developing a prototype and testing it. So what did come out of the workshops was um, the wish of the different actors to create a shared space, possibly hosted by one of the universities, where equipment could be put, used in common to develop and test uh, different prototypes for um, uh, products using recycled carbon fiber that then could be promoted towards a market. And there was also the idea, which is being worked on by the actors, to create a regional group promoting the combined competences of all the different actors all along the value chain. So it would just be one large actor saying, you know, we can make this specific type of product. It's we have a regional competence in this area. And that was two of the two of the main actions. OK, cool. Um, uh, I see another question, maybe in Spanish, but um, I see that you already responded to this um, in the chat box. Um, if you have other questions, guys, do not hesitate to ask them in the chat box. And if it's okay for you, that's cool. Uh, we can uh, we can continue and finish um, uh, and finish this webinar. Um, guys, uh, do you have uh, other things to add? No. <laughs> okay, perfect. So um, I will continue. And um, of course, uh, if you have other questions, do not hesitate to, to send us a mail um, for, for the next steps. So do not hesitate to, to start your next project by downloading uh, our tools on ciclab.com. So uh, today we introduced you the Ciclab Canvas, but you have the value chain canvas as well, or the partner maps that are very useful too. Um, if you want to, to move on your, uh, with your business models and try to, to connect it with the true 21st century, um, get in touch with Joanna, Guy, Michel, Fede, uh, or I will be glad to, to help you. And um, do not hesitate to join our online, uh, online courses, uh, which, are, which will be uh, available in, um, in a few days or weeks for, for, for the models. Uh, so yeah, I hope um, you enjoyed it. Um, Joanna, Fede, Guy, uh, Michel, do you have uh, other things to, to add? 
No, simply the, the actual practical use of doing this uh, has really made a difference to, to the people I've uh, shared it with. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Yeah, glad to share more information with anyone in Latin America that, that is willing to understand how this can apply to their business model. Feel free to, to contact and to move forward. Yeah on the Colibri uh, website or directly uh, on LinkedIn uh, for, for you. Perfect. Um, thank you very much, guys. And um, uh, have a great uh, afternoon and bye-bye. Um, and bye-bye. Thank you, Britt.